Hi, everyone. If you're logging into the webinar, I'm just going to give people about 30 seconds here before we start. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and begin. Welcome to Midwest Dairies Yogurt and Understanding Growth Opportunities webinar. As you likely know, Midwest Dairy partners with a wide variety of premier market research firms. Today's webinar will be led by Joanna Clifton. She is a food industry expert from Innova Market Insights. Innova is a leader in the global market intelligence space that specializes in researching and reporting on consumer and market trends. Joanna is Innova's Insights and Innovation Manager. She has a multi-regional back marketing background in flavors and ingredients. Her understanding of consumer and market trends across many food and beverage categories is grounded in her 20 years of experience collaborating with brands to unearth growth opportunities that are in alignment with their strategies. I invite you to ask questions through the Q&A feature and we will address them at the end of the presentation. And then after the webinar, we'll be sure to send you a link to the presentation as well as the recording. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Jessica, sorry. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Joanna Clifton um, from Innova Insights and Innovation Team. And today uh, we're going to look at opportun growth opportunities for yogurt. There we go. I'm just trying to get photos of the of the um, of the of the presentation. So, um, of course, um, today yogurt is very much has been very much affected by um, inflation, it's not helping to grow the category right now, but um, we're going to look at some USDA per capita consumption numbers in a minute that show that do show um, a, a healthy increase in consumption of yogurt. Okay, um, the, the the consumer insights today come from various um, studies that Innova makes um, in the course of a year. These have come from the last three years from um, flavor studies and also from um, health, wellness, lifestyle, yogurt, immunity, et cetera. So there are, there's a lot of information from, um, from our consumer surveys um, contained in this webinar. Let's start. And so this is, this is what we're going to look at today. We'll take a quick look at the USDA figures for per capita growth in yogurt consumption. For consumer motivation for purchasing yogurt, no surprise that health actually leads to this. Um, we're going to look at some health claims on dairy yogurt versus plant-based yogurt and see what, what learnings or potential growth opportunities there are there. Um, we're going to look also at the immunity gut health links and consumer perspectives on immunity and product examples, um, and then proceed to key, key learnings. Um, at the end. So let's quickly look at the capital growth in yogurt consumption per um, the USDA, okay? And you can see that although, as I said, um, and everybody, we all know that inflation isn't helping to grow the category right now, here are USDA per capita consumption numbers for the last few years showing um, a 6.7 increase between 2019 and 2021, so pre and post COVID. We all know that um, during COVID, there was a, a huge demand for yogurt, not least for its immune health benefits, which we're going to go into a little later. But what are the reasons, give, what are the reasons for um, increasing consumption of yogurt among US consumers? Let's take a look at certain, some consumer insights from Innova surveys. So we asked um, US consumers, have you increased or decreased your consumption of yogurt, so spoonable or drinkable, over the past year? Okay. 
And you can see here the global average, US, and also the Canadian data. And you can see that um, consumption habits in the US, right here, the middle um, column, actually almost exactly mirror the global picture, with the majority of consumers in the US maintaining consumption of yogurt and one in five increasing consumption. Um, here you can see, of course, the um, Canadian figures. And the primary reason given for increasing consumption of yogurt among US consumers, we're going to look at this in a little more detail in a minute, is health for 54% of consumers ahead of more variety and novelty. So flavor opportunities there among 33 consumers. Um, among those decreasing their consumption of yogurt, the most common reason for this change in behavior is um, a change in taste, their flavor priorities shifted or they didn't find exactly what they wanted or the innovation they wanted in terms of yogurt flavors. When we ask consumers, why do you consume yogurt, or drink, or spoonable or drinkable yogurt? You can see on the right, the US respondents replies compared with the global average, an average of 36 um, countries of consumers surveyed. And you can see that by and large, um, the US responses are in sync with global, actually over-indexing when we ask when, when they mention convenience. Okay, so 29% of US consumers versus 28 of the global average um, to make myself happy, the same, and to indulge or reward myself, 17% of consumers. But by far the largest um, motivator or reason for consuming yogurt is health. 51% of global consumers and a very similar number, so almost half of US consumers surveyed said that it's healthy. Yogurt is healthy, followed by, closely by, it's tasty, okay? Um, so 45% of US consumers choose yogurt um, because it's healthy, I guess it's tasty, sorry, and then convenience and the other um, benefits. If we look here, this is, um, this is the sort of point of purchase influences. Which product attributes most influence your purchasing decision, okay, for um, spoonable or drinkable yogurt? Here on the right this time are the global averages, but here are the product attributes most influencing US consumers. Flavor, 43%, followed by right now in these inflationary times, the all important um, cost. This comes from our 2023 category survey. So this is, um, so these are very, very up-to-date uh, percentages, freshness, health aspects, and the brand. So this is a point of purchase. Why are you choosing between one yogurt and another? It'll be flavor. But overall, the consumer, as we saw in the slide before, um, totally recognized the, um, the real intrinsic healthful benefits of yogurt. Um, so cost is very, very similar on a global, in a global average to the average number of consumers mentioning it um, in the US. They tend to be in the same order, these um, product attributes, okay? Um, so digging a little bit more deeply into health, we ask consumers which claims most influence your purchasing decision when consuming yogurt, okay? And so um, made with real ingredients or natural claims, influence 28% of US consumers versus um, about one in four uh, global consumers. So very important to US consumers made with real ingredients and also to 22% of consumers high in or a good source of protein. Obviously a claim on many yogurts, one of the top claims of course that we see on yogurts, but you can also see that product safety and sugar, sugar um, concerns are right up there, okay? So we're gonna be looking at the actual claims later on US um, yogurts and taking a look to see where perhaps there are growth opportunities in emphasizing, for example, um, reduced sugar, okay? You can also see the importance of no artificial flavors or colors, um, of low, no reduced fat, um, and many US yogurts, as you know, are positioned um, with 
fat reduction claim. Okay, so these are digging into health claims. These are the ones um, most important to US consumers, all the way from real ingredients, product safety, low, no, or reduced sugar, protein um, claims, no artificial flavors or colors, and um, fat reduction. Okay, and then a little bit further behind, organic and other claims. So now we can see uh, what consumers are focused on when it comes to health claims. Let's move on. And what you can see here is that the US consumer, um, as which is probably absolutely no surprise to you, is more a daytime consumer of yogurt. The preferred consumption occasions are um, breakfast, leading just slightly, afternoon snacks, and also lunch. Almost 30% of consumers um, say they consume yogurt at lunchtime. Here you can see the global averages, which contain more evening and nighttime um, consumption occasions, which are much less frequent in the US, as we all know. Um, Plant-based diets still remain niche in the US. It's, it's kind of instructive to compare the US right here, okay, with flexitarian or meat-reduced, dairy-reduced um, products with vegetarians and vegans. In the US, you can see how niche it is in, in comparison with um, many countries um, whose consumers we surveyed in the rest of the world, okay? Um, you can see that only 13% of consumers um, say they follow um, a flexitarian diet, 6% vegetarian, and an even smaller percent, 5%, as you'd expect, vegan. So really, um, the US has some of the lowest flexitarianism rates in the world and um, veganism, but one in four do regularly consume meat and dairy alternatives. Okay, so that's an, that's an important um, point that one in four consumers told us that they actually do consume meat or dairy alternatives. Here, you can see the US data, and while only a relatively small proportion of consumers in the US say they're vegan, 5%, as we saw before, one in four say they regularly eat plant-based foods as an alternative to meat and dairy. And this, of course, may be driven by several reasons, including health, ethical, sustainable, sustainability reasons. But still, um, it's, um, it's a relatively small proportion of consumers that say they actually strongly agree that they regularly eat plant-based foods, just 7% strongly agree, 16% agree, and the vast majority are neutral disagree or strongly disagree with the fact that they regularly eat plant-based foods as an alternative to meat or dairy, okay? So still a little bit um, niche in the US is the plant-based trend, although um, it does, it is of course um, growing. Um, let's take a look here, sorry, I should have gone there, what, at what's shaping the yogurt category. And the majority, of course, of yogurt in the US, 80% um, is dairy yogurt and 20% non-dairy. This, um, these were 20, 2022 figures, finish January to September, 2022, um, 80, 20, and I doubt it's changed um, very much um, since then. So the majority of NPV is dairy yogurt, but one in four launches are now non-dairy. Um, you can see here an example of a non-dairy yogurt, quite an interesting flavor combination, uh, strawberry hibiscus, so a known flavor with um, a slightly less known flavor, although it's becoming more well known um, from the Starbucks hibiscus flavor that um, people seem to enjoy a lot. You can see, creamy new recipe, uh, five grams of plant protein um, per serving. And obviously the base is oat milk. Okay, so that's, um, that was a September, 2022 um, new product launch from Nancy's. Okay, you can see probiotic outlined in this um, plant-based yogurt. Now, this is, um, this is the table that I find 
quite interesting. And it's best um, seen in table form rather than a graph because there, are, there is an awful, there's a fair amount of information here. Okay. What we're looking at here are the top spoonable dairy yogurt claims. Okay. The percentage of spoonable dairy yogurt that have that have each claim between 2018 and 2022. And then looking at the same claims for non-dairy. Obviously, non-dairy has got um, a different hierarchy of claims, vegan, plant-based at the top, et cetera. But I thought it would be instructive to look at the top dairy yogurt claims um, for dairy yogurt and for non-dairy yogurt to see um, what the difference is, what the similarities are, whether there are any learnings to be had, any opportunities from a study of these claims. So the reason, as these are mainly health claims, the reason I left the packaging claims in here, this is so sustainable, recyclable, biodegradable packaging claim. The reason I left it there is because rather than a, rather than a health claim, this is the top claim, um, sort of the most uh, of the most sort of health related sustainable claims in US dairy yogurt packaging is the top claim. So, um, and there is a health claim that comes close to it. So 63% of dairy yogurts um, tracked by Innova between 2018 and 2022 have a sustainable packaging claim, followed by um, a similar number um, of the reduced fat claim. Of course, this is very, very different from non-dairy yogurt. Um, then you have to tell you, but I did want to point out that this is the leading health claim um, in US yogurt, as you're probably um, well aware, but you can see a complete difference in um, perspective from non-dairy yogurts, whereas uh, it's, this claim is in 63% of dairy yogurts, just 41, 41, 42% of non-dairy yogurts. The emphasis is um, on other claims. If you look at gluten-free, you can see that uh, about 57% of dairy yogurts can have this claim, whereas 70% of non-dairy, okay? Big emphasis on protein, okay? Which is obviously very much in sync with um, consumer, um, with, with consumer perceptions of the intrinsic healthfulness of dairy yogurt. So pretty much in 50% of dairy yogurts, you can see a protein claim, whereas logically far less in non-dairy. But, um, if we move down, we've seen that for consumers, real ingredients or natural claims are very important to them. You can see the natural claim, which obviously has been under um, a microscope for the last few years. Um, it exists on 24% of products and way fewer, of course, in, in non-dairy. But um, maybe more ways of pointing out real ingredients, the natural ingredients within yogurts that would be more in sync with the consumer's desire to see claims for real ingredients, for natural ingredients, than just in um, less than just less than um, one in four uh, yogurt launches over the past five years. Now, where you can really see some differences between dairy and non-dairy is that non-dairy yogurts clearly capitalize more on what are intrinsic values to um, dairy yogurts. Okay, um, that they're probiotics. OK, um, so about 44 percent of non-dairy yogurts point out, hey, this is a probiotic product and only just over one in five of dairy yogurts. Is this a missed opportunity? You guys are the, are the experts could be digestive gut health claims intrinsic to um, dairy yogurt. OK, but it's only pointed out on about the same, um, probably absolutely no coincidence, of course, um, percentage of yogurts as probiotic just over one in five, whereas almost one in three yogurts that are non-dairy have a digestive gut health claim. Health, super important for consumers. We're going to look at immune health in a minute. Um, um, extremely important for consumers. Uh, we know that um, yogurt consumption rose during the pandemic because of the consumer concern for immunity. But here you can see um, the difference between the two. And then moving on down to immune health claims, okay, your people, immunity yogurts, you can see number one, very few yogurts use the word immune 
or immunity on the packaging in the claims, very few dairy yogurts, and um, more non-dairy yogurts. Okay, so is this a lost opportunity? The immune health um, related claims, so immune, digestive, gut health, probiotic, prebiotic, etc. Is this a missed opportunity that non-dairy is capitalizing on more? Okay. Worth asking, worth asking um, the question. And it could be one reason that alternative dairy is gaining ground at a time when yogurt growth has been dampened somewhat by inflation. It could be these benefits and claims that it, it's capitalizing on. Um, let's take a look at some dairy examples because new products is what Innova does very well. So here are, for example, I like, I like looking at this, this forager project. It's an organic probiotic cashew milk yogurt. And so these are non-dairy yogurts with the claims they're really capitalizing on, like probiotic, gut health, and immune health. Okay, here you can see three examples of um, two very, very um, recently uploaded products to the database, Forager and um, Wayfair that supports immune health. And then these chickpea plant-based yogurts okay, with um, the claims probiotic to promote a healthy gut. So three examples of how non-dairy is really capitalizing on these claims. You can see this little um, supports, um, supports immune health shield on the way for yogurt, which is quite, quite interesting right there. Okay, um, moving on, let's look at some protein claims which are present in um, over 50% of dairy yogurt. Uh, let's take a look at this Icelandic provision skier yogurt, for example, contains 14 grams of protein. This we added to the database in January last month. Um, it also says rich in protein. Um, this Meltemi premium Greek yogurt contains 13 grams of protein and Carbmaster, nine grams of protein. So this is um, one, of the, one of the brands that of course, by its very nature, Carbmaster is capitalizing on the low, the, the importance consumers give to low reduced sugar claims. Okay. So, in essence, um, a keto dairy yogurt. Um, if you look at fiber, fiber claims globally in um, food and beverage, Fiber claims um, are growing by 5% per annum. And you can see that clearly fiber claims are, of course, most frequent in fermented yogurt drinks. Okay. But um, to give you some, to give you some idea, perhaps fiber claims are another lost opportunity, as you only see them in about 13% um, of these fermented beverages. 7% non-dairy yogurts and only two percent in spoonable dairy yogurts okay so perhaps um an opportunity for further growth of the sector could be with fiber claims here you can see chobani complete obviously um a, a drinkable yogurt that contains three grams of fiber is a good source of fiber and then coco june overnight oats that are fiber pills pills sorry and probiotic packed, okay? This is a vegan yogurt, okay? And then of course, Activia with its um, plain good source of fiber, fiber highlighted on the pack because of the ingredients there, okay? And it actually claims that it may reduce the frequency of minor digestive discomfort as well. So again, of course, um, digestive health and very much related to immunity are fiber claims as well. Oh, sorry, forward instead of back. Now let's take a look at flavor trends. We know that at the point of purchase, flavor is a very, very important consideration or motivator, purchasing motivator for consumers. And here, let's take a look at the top 10 flavors, probably absolutely no surprises here in US dairy yogurt over the past five years. And the main flavors would be strawberry, vanilla, blueberry, peach, and banana. Okay, there's an, an example. 
of a protein yogurt, light and fit with a strawberry flavor. And then when you look at leading flavor blends, because in the Innova database, we can analyze flavor blends as well. Um, absolutely no surprise within the US, banana strawberry is the leading blend, of course, especially in children's yogurt. And then milk chocolate vanilla has really risen up the ranks. It doesn't occupy quite 1% of yogurts, but in terms of a flavor blend, it's right up there. Okay, here's an example from wheat yogurt by Yoplait, creamy vanilla and chocolate followed by blueberry, strawberry, cherry, vanilla, strawberry, vanilla, and strawberry cheesecake. Okay, so those are the leading flavor blends over the past five years and the top 10 flavors. Of course, fruit flavors are always the most popular in the US um, yogurt, new product development. Um, you can see here that there's been one change in the top five flavors between uh, 2018 and 2022 that um, banana used to be in fifth position and um, in 2022, um, mango was in fifth position instead. This is one year before we were looking at cu a cumulative five year, okay? Five year top flavors. Here's an example of an island mango with peach and pineapple, a Greek yogurt, creamy with 2% milk fat from Norman's actually with mango, peach, and pineapple, so a real tropical blend. Now, having really eyeballed the flavors um, of dairy yogurts, okay, um, what I find are the flavors to watch out for, okay, the ones that, that where there is growth in flavors, it tends to be in orange, lemon, almond, with almond and ginger flavors. You guys have probably seen um, over the past two years, as I have, the increase in yogurt with uh, lemon, with lemon flavors, which is very popular in, in Europe and other regions, but never was quite so um, pronounced um, in the US. Here's a really, um, here's an interesting product, this Chobani probiotic drinking yogurt, a fermented beverage with orange ginger flavors. And when we look at um, immunity, in a few minutes, you're going to see why these why these flavors um, could make an important growth opportunity. Okay, Siggy's orange ginger, usual flavor, as is chocolate orange, more indulgent. But how often do you see chocolate and orange together in a yogurt? Maybe in a dessert or in a cake, but in a yogurt, not so not so much. Here, apricot and almond. So peach is much more is is, is sort of the the main kind of soft fruit in yogurt, but here, apricot, as you guys say, right? apricot and almond pieces, okay, in a whole meat yogurt. Lemon and cream, probably to soften the citrus impact of the lemon. So really these are flavors that we see um, are just sort of, are really beginning to emerge. Orange, lemon, almond, and ginger. Some together like orange and ginger, and some like lemon, uh, pretty much on its own or with vanilla. So keep an eye, keep an eye on these ones, um, especially as we move in to talk about immunity. And there is growing interest in foods um, that boost immunity, especially in beverages such as iced tea, kombucha. And we're going to, have to take a look at these and of course some examples of new yogurt items in this immunity gut health space. So let's start with some consumer perspective. We ask consumers on the left here, um, in recent months, have you purchased food or beverage for the purpose of any of the following specific functions? So please note, well, please note that this is food and beverage in general, not specifically yogurt. Um, and so select all that apply. And about, sorry, my mouse is out of control. And so um, hydrating and rehydrating is what almost one in four consumers mention purchasing. Um, food and beverage for, okay, which benefits, long lasting energy, boosting immunity. Almost 18% of consumers say that they have purchased food and beverages um, over in recent months um, for the purpose of both boosting immunity. And then here, a very similar percentage um, for improving gut or digestive health. So similar percentages, not quite 20%, but still. Um, a really healthy percentage of consumers selecting among a long list um, 
of specific functions that we gave them, um, boosting immunity, immunity and improving gut digestive health among the top five, followed by improving sleep. Okay, and then we followed up with a question about which of the following health and wellness functions that a food and beverage product might offer are most desirable to you? And this kind of double checks the, um, their selections. Um, again, you get energy at the top, hydrating second instead of the reversal, but you get boosting immunity in third position for almost 26% of consumers, improving gut and digestive health about 24% of consumers. So one was a health and wellness survey and um, the other, was a lifestyle and nutrition survey, okay? And they both came up with um, at least similar priorities for consumers when it comes to immunity and the related digestive gut health claims, okay? Um, and food and beverage product launches with immune health claims have really remained on a steady path over the past five years, overall food and beverage, okay? And then um, how proactive have consumers or do consumers say they've been to improve their own immune health function? Um, the first question we asked them was, which of the following actions have you taken to improve your immunity in the past 12 months? And so again, it comes up top, staying hydrated, supplements, exercise, sleep patterns. But right here, I've eaten food or beverages that support immunity. About 90% of consumers um, say, that's what they've done. And then another 14%, I've incorporated beneficial bacteria. So for example, probiotics or fermented foods, okay, um, into my diet. So these are the top 10 and um, immunity, the immunity functionality and the beneficial bacteria, probiotic, fermented foods uh, functionality is also, are also in the top 10, okay? And now if we move further in our consumer questioning to ingredients, we ask them, if you've consumed foods or beverages or dietary supplements to boost your immunity, which active ingredients did they complain? They could select any of them that, that they, they contain. So here you can see vitamin C, about 37% of respondents, D, 36%, and then the B vitamins, and then, of course, other ingredients such as broccoli, sorry about the misspelling, broccoli, garlic, well-known immune functions, tea, honey, spinach, almonds, etc. citrus fruits, okay? So if you think of citrus fruits, almonds, you can see honey in yogurt um, nowadays. Apart from the vitamins, you could start um, drawing parallels between ingredients and health, of course. Um, so um, consumers are obviously associating citrus fruits and almonds, um, honey and tea with health. Let's move on to a couple of questions we asked them about flavors and immunity, thinking of, of course, flavor innovation in food and beverage and also in yogurt itself. So this is food, food and beverage in general. When I want something to boost my immunity, I choose, I, I, sorry, the question really is, when I want a flavor to boost my immunity, I choose vegetable flavors, honey flavors, all around food and beverage, not just yogurt, which is why you're getting, um, you're getting vegetables here, honey, tea, matcha, green, black, ginger, turmeric, grapefruit, obviously a citrus fruit. So um, foods to boost immunity. And then when I want something to boost my immunity, I choose these flavors, citrus, over a third of our respondents, berries, almost a third, orchard fruits, apple pears, apricots, etc., one in four, warm spices, cardamom, cinnamon, allspice. To this, um, we can add turmeric, right? So almost one in four, and tropical fruits. So these are the flavors that US consumers have told us that they associate with immunity. So um, really drawing a parallel between these flavor innovation and also um, emphasizing the immune function, not just with flavors, but by actually um, putting the claim on the pack or associated claims on the pack could be a powerful combination. Just a suggestion for a growth opportunity. Here are some examples 
of um, dairy yogurts that have immunity and gut health benefits. I think this is a really interesting one. A pineapple turmeric chobani probiotics, obviously ferment, fermented beverage. Okay. And even, not even, uh, the ingredients are interesting. The first ingredient is carbonated water. But of course, you guys will know as well as I that um, carbonated water um, is considered to be effective against gastrointestinal symptoms. You've also got turmeric juice, turmeric extract, and culture. So turmeric, a powerful anti-inflammatory, which is great for the immune system as well. And but used just as much as a front of pack pack flavor, if you like. Obviously, it's real turmeric root, but um, a pineapple turmeric, very unusual, innovative um, flavor combination for a yogurt emphasizing immunity and gut health. Okay, here you can see tropical and vibrant. Pineapple turmeric is crafted from fruit juice and botanicals with immunity supporting probiotics. And there's even more here, um, contain billions of multi-benefit probiotics to support your immunity, aid digestion, promote gut health, et cetera, et cetera, deliciously, okay? I haven't tried it, but I certainly am now that I've seen this. Here's another one. A, a, smaller, a smaller brand, obviously, than Chobani. They're all smaller than Chobani now. Um, Tramona with a Bulgarian yogurt. So locally, uh, a local type of yogurt, very very popular nowadays um, with the, the Skiri yogurts and the other um, sort of, uh, if you like, ethnic kind of yogurts with A2, okay? Whole milk. And then it will not only provide you with much needed vitamins, good fats, proteins, and enzymes, but will also supply you with beneficial probiotics, excellent for your immune system and digestive tract. So like a three-in-one immunity, digestion, probiotic. It's not that um, it's unusual for the, obviously the three claims to be, to be there, but it's unusual in, in dairy yogurt for, for them to be really emphasized as much. You saw the percentages the lower percentages in dairy than in non-dairy where any of these three claims um, were used. Here are some more. Um, Activia immune system, so vitamin A contributing to the normal function of the immune system. Probiotics contribute to healthy gut flora, certified by the Canadian Digestive Health Foundation, that's Canadian Activia. This is um, the US one, again, with immune system right there and here's a probiotic with citrus flavors so bright and citrusy is one of the claims with immunity supporting probiotics um, help support immune and digestive health multi-benefit probiotic for immune health digestive health and gut health okay so um pretty nice uh well-rounded immune boosting fermented product by chobani and we saw in one of the one of the survey questions at the beginning, that fermented products were one of the types of one of the top products types of products that consumers are consuming in order to improve their immune health. In recent years, there's also, um, as I pointed out way back at the beginning of this, there's been high growth for U.S. soft drink with immune health positioning. So therefore. Um, could we not say, well, then there's obvious potential for dairy drinks um, to be positioned more clearly with, with immune health positioning. Here you can see a probiotic water. I mean, if there are probiotic waters, why can't there be more um, probiotic or fermented beverages with these claims front and center, okay? Two billion cultures, okay? Um, and you can see that there's been a 28% increase in soft drinks with immune health positioning, especially in, um, in teas, in waters, in juices. And this is pure aqua kiwi melon flavored probiotic water, promotes digestive and immune health. Uh, they detail the probiotic culture used, and there is even turmeric extract, obviously used as a color inside there. Not a particular claim, but um, perhaps there's a lesson here that it's well worth pointing out the probiotic digestive gut health immune sort of link to um, fermented beverages, dairy yogurts, spoonable yogurts, as well as the drinkable ones, 
um, just because there's growth in there's growth in waters, why couldn't we push the growth there? So let's come to um, some key findings from this um, this webinar. And obviously, we're not going to be in this downward facing eco economy forever or even very long. Yogurt grew during COVID. Yogurt consumption grew during COVID, and clearly, it can grow again. So where could it potentially expand? Obviously, we've pointed out um, some areas today, and I'm just going to um, summarize now so that we can begin to think, well, where's dairy yogurt going in the next five years? What are the opportunities over the next five years for it? And these are some of the opportunities, some growth opportunities we've looked at today. So the intrinsic health benefits of yogurt are the key purchasing motivators for US consumers. And there are health claims that perhaps are not fully taken advantage of, that non-dairy products are taken advantage of. Perhaps there's a lesson there, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide, but you can see um, that, oh, I'm sorry, immune-related claims where consumer interest is high are not fully taken advantage of. They're not in nearly as many, um, a higher, as high percentage of dairy products as in non-dairy. So immune health, digestive gut health claims, prebiotic, probiotic claims that draw the consumer's attention to the indisputable health benefits of yogurt. Uh, possibly you could say that they shouldn't be understated. It could be a growth opportunity. Sugar reduction we saw is also important to consumers. And um, there were far fewer um, dairy yogurt products, product launches with sugar reduction claims than um, non-dairy and perhaps lower indeed than consumer interest warrants. Fiber also, you could add, there aren't so many fiber claims on yogurt. Um, obviously, um, in, to some extent, a reflection of the ingredients inside, but perhaps that's something that could also be improved upon. And then health-related um, flavor innovation. We've seen today how much flavor influences consumer purchasing behavior of yogurt. Um, and you, could, you can also see the parallels in our survey that the consumers draw between certain flavor directions and immune health claims. They would choose, for example, citrus flavors, berry, warm spices like turmeric um, in, for, for a product that does enhance immune health. And obviously flavor is a key point of purchase motivator um, for consumers. Um, one thing I want to add to the, um, to the fiber piece, is that, sorry, to the sugar reduction piece, is that um, the US yogurt category, as we saw in the claim, has been primarily focused on fat reduction with half of all yogurts launched in the past year having a low or no or reduced fat claim. However, um, I think it could be uh, a growth opportunity to look towards the direction of sugar reduction, as has been the case in other markets around the world. Sugar reduction is more pronounced in yogurts in, in other countries. And then finally, 25% um, of US yogurt consumers have told us that are influenced by real ingredients and natural flames. Um, there must be something that can be done there. And in general, it's really the intrinsic healthiness of yogurts, uh, yogurt to promote. As I said um, before, and as Maureen said so wisely yesterday, yogurt consumption grew during the pandemic and it can, it can grow again. Consumer interest in their health, in immunity has not diminished. So I hope this has been um, a helpful look at some of the growth opportunities um, of, or potential growth opportunities for yogurt. And um, I look forward to any questions that I can, that I can help you answer today. As far as questions, and we don't have any questions in the Q&A. We did have a comment about sugar, which I think you addressed adequately. Um, there definitely is, you know, that sugar reduction is happening in a lot of categories, and it does seem mm -hmm. to be underrepresented. 
in the U.S. yogurt market. So that is, you know, interesting to call that out and just reinforce that sugar is another potential opportunity, even though we didn't focus on that a lot throughout the presentation. Um, thank you so much. It was really great information. I really found it informative. Um, we do have another question here. Okay. So can you talk more about trends for whole milk yogurts in the U.S.? Okay, so um, probably the best thing I can do is to get into the database and give you some real hard data on whole milk. Is that um, to, to look at growth trends in whole milk, um, where it is, um, in which types of yogurt it is, the, the associated claims? Um. Is that something that you'd be able to tease out of Absolutely. your database? Yeah. Okay, then I'm yes, happy. we I'll can. I'll send you what we have. Yes, most definitely. Okay, perfect. Bob, I will follow up with you. Okay. Catherine asks, um, was kefir covered at all in this survey? Is kefir yes. part of the yogurt, drinkable yogurt? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was covered. And um, in, the, in the fermented beverages, of course. And again, um, we, we have masses of information on kefir, both in our reports and in the database. Um, if I, I'll see if I can find um, a, a complete report that I could send. Otherwise, what I'll do is tease out again some, um, some trends on kefir, if that would be interesting to you. Perfect. Um, and then, Emily, yes, this presentation will be available on our website. We will send you a link to the presentation as well as the recording so that you will have that as reference. Um, and then, Joanna, do we have a growth number on drinkable yogurts? Is that something yes. we provide? Yes, we do. And I'm going to go back over it. Yeah, yes. I know I, I, I looked it up and probably should have included it actually, but I will send it to you. In fact, I can put it into the presentation. Okay, that would be perfect. Yeah. So keeper, drinkable yogurts and whole milk yogurts to investigate a little further and give you some data. Couple more questions actually coming in. So okay. what is the trend towards athletic recovery versus consumer consumption? Um, so, so are we talking about sports nutrition now, right? So with way, I think, I think, um, maybe just overarching trends around athletic recovery, um, and how food is tying in. I don't know, Rod, I, if you okay. have I mean, something more the, specific to top, share. It'll be hard for me to just come up with the, the data. Um, if, if we were looking at the database in front of us, I could quickly, I could quickly do it for you. So we should add that to the list um, of topics to explore and give sure. you the, the correct data to, yeah. Rod, if you have more context behind your question, yeah. you can come offline or you can just shoot me an email, whatever you prefer. Yeah, that would be great. And then Bob had a question. Do you have any sales trends on pack sizes? Are bulk sizes of yogurts trending higher than single serve cups? I don't think we have that here through Innova. That would be more of an IRI question. Um, to get, right? um, yeah, to look at SKUs, it would be on, more an IRI question, but we do have a very um, sort of granular packaging, um, packaging search filter. We could attempt, okay. but IRI would give you the real accurate, you know, uh, SKU numbers. So that might be of more interest to you. But just so you sure. know, you can analyze packaging the database in the database. If you could just tell us about the introductions, you know, around uh, bulk versus single serve, sure. at least we'd have that. And then I can yeah. look at it through IRI as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we have, you know, got a lot of great questions from you guys. Really appreciate your engagement. Um, certainly, if you have any additional questions that come to mind, um, you know, after the presentation here, we can address those individually. Um, as I mentioned, the, the presentation will be sent out along with the recording to all those that signed up 
Um, and we hope to see you on future webinars. You can contact me directly, Maureen Windish. Um, Martha Kemper is our VP of Dairy um, Experienced on the demand side, working a lot with retailers. Um, and she would be available for questions as well. And we will make sure that all of that information is put into our um, sort of thank you for joining our webinar today. So thanks so much and you guys have a great day. Thank you all very much. Pleasure to present to you. Thank you.